A true artist is not one who is inspired, but one who inspires others. Salvador Dali. Looks a little out there, but that's okay, because he was one of our great, great artists. And uh, someday I aspire to get my beard to the same thing that he does with his mustache, because, you know, artists are weird. Um, it's this very quote that I aspire every day to live by, inspire others. I have lots of kids, lots of people coming through my studio here in town, and uh, my main goal is to inspire them to create art, showing them that they can create art. And in rural Wisconsin, we have many, many places that people can go to to learn how to do these things. So I'm very proud that in Rhinelander, I can provide uh, the opportunity to do things and inspire others through art. Inspiration can be found in many different places. I actually heard someone out here shout what they're going to get out of this is inspiration, so I hope we don't disappoint. Um, inspiration can be found in paintings, it can be found in acting, it can be found in dance, music, many, many other creative ways of getting a story across or a feeling across. You could even find inspiration by reading a Sunday comic. Larger cities, such as Chicago, have an abundance of cultural and artistic opportunities, largely in ways that our, their economic development helps them get these different opportunities, such as art museums and uh, music cultural centers. In Chicago, it's a huge cultural experience, and bigger cities have an abundance of these, and rightfully so. I've seen the Picasso down at Daly Plaza. I've seen the Cloud Gate sculpture, better known as the Big Shiny Bean. I've taken my distorted self portrait in that bean quite a few times being down there. I've seen some of the greatest works of art in the Chicago Art Museums. You know, Picasso, I've seen uh, Da Vinci. I've, we even saw Van Gogh at one time come through, not them personally, but their paintings, obviously, uh, come through and showing those beautiful works of art. And to be inspired, that is truly what they do. So when I think of that quote at the very beginning about inspiring others through your art, that really hits home with me. Now, a lot of people that live in this area, they see this stuff every day, and they don't even realize how inspired they are by looking at these. A lot of times they'll walk by these fantastic works of art, not even giving it a second thought while the tourists are there snapping pictures in front of it. But I'll tell you what, if they were ever missing, they would absolutely notice because this stuff is part of their cultural identity in the big cities. Cultural identity can be found in all walks of life all over this country, all over the world, actually. Um, take, for example, our opening act, the tribal drum beating. That all has to do with their cultural identity. We have stories in the Northwoods. You know, Paul Bunyan, that's a big Midwest legend. Uh, the Hodag and Rhinelander, that's a huge cultural identity piece, okay? You have all sorts of different cryptids, you know, Bigfoot, and you got, uh, in Point Pleasant, you have the Mothman. Celebrations are surrounded and created by these myths and legends that encompass our Midwest life. And all of these creations, the Mothman, the Hodag, Paul Bunyan, all, they're all part of those areas' cultural identities. There's businesses based on those cultural identities, whole businesses based around uh, a Mothman or a celebration surrounded by the Mothman. Even here in Rhinelander, we have the Hodag store that caters to nothing but Hodags. It's all built up around those cultural identities. And those businesses are thriving because of it. We have a very, very rich history in legends and lore up here in rural Wisconsin. And that's why we're thriving, because of those. 
In 2007, there was a, uh, a phrase created called creative placemaking. The idea is that the arts can aid in envisioning and shaping the future of a community in rural areas. Shaping an area with their culture. It's getting local government to work with creative people such as painters, uh, creative people like poets and songwriters singing songs about the cultural area. I mean, heck, there was a song a long time ago that my wife absolutely loves when I sing it to her, the Edmund Fitzgerald, okay? And she's giving me the look right now. She's <laughs> so, but the Edmund Fitzgerald, is a, it's, it's a legend. It's a history piece that was catastrophic and extremely important to our local history. So having songs written about the Edmund Fitzgerald or the song about Hodag Busters, <laughs> we have several videos out there created based on just the Hodag, which is fantastic. And those songs, you may not, you might, may not think about it, but those songs are actually adding to this area's cultural identity. Fostering relationships between local government and creatives. That's how we get our rural communities to really thrive. In my opinion, rural areas are places that benefit from this the most. Now, I really think about how rural areas benefit from this the most. Rhinelander is on the cusp of this relationship, building and becoming a cultural and artistic destination. My friend here is just a one example of that artistic representation of our cultural identity. You can see these guys all over town. You can see them in front of the chamber. We have a really big one in front of the chamber. Heck, we even have this guy on our water tower. If he is not part of our cultural identity, then I don't know what is. Now, the Northwoods has so many creative people in it. It's mind-boggling how many artists, poets, singers live in the Northwoods of Wisconsin. But many people don't think about that when they think Northwoods, Wisconsin. They think rural. They think Northwoods is known for fishing and hiking, snowmobiling, ATV, UTV trails. But hardly anyone, except for those in the know, think of it as an artistic and cultural art destination. Public art in the Northwoods is important to the rural community at large. Like I said, Rhinelander is a perfect example. You'll see representations of the Hodag here. You'll see representations of Paul Bunyan in Minnesota. You'll see representations of the Mothman in Point Pleasant. And in the far, far coast off to the west, you'll see nothing but statues of Bigfoot. Heck, we even see Bigfoot here in Wisconsin every now and then and representations of him. Statues, art, stores, representations, all very important. There's other murals too. Recently, we have representation of our historical uh, contributions to the area. Representations like the paper mill, or the Pioneer Park Historical Complex. These are very important that show that our rural little town is so important to our history and the history of this nation. A lot of th big things happen in little towns and it's important that that representation is out there for people to see. Anyone driving through town that doesn't live in Rhineland or, or the area will look at this mural and say, Wow, there's a lot of rich history in this place, and they'll, go, they'll want to learn more about it. Another great place to find that representation is at the Pioneer Park Historical Complex. You go down there and you see little miniatures that move, a huge train set. I mean, there are representations of the logging community, how, how the people logged. They have representations of how the Hodag came to be. That is one of the most richest places in our history of finding out what this area is truly is about. And all those little miniatures and all those little statues and everything, 
That's all par art. That's all public art for people to go and look at. Believe it or not, even that is art. So let's circle back to creative placemaking. I claimed Rhinelander is on the cusp of this creative placemaking in rural Wisconsin. Our mayor, our city administrator, are huge supporters of creative placemaking. They are working very hard and diligently with me and Art Start to create a arts commission for our town. The idea of this is to bring in public art that can inspire and encourage people and bring people in that want to see our displays of public art. Murals like this are very important in that display. As I said, the mayor and administrator are very eager to work with creatives. They, they are encouraging people to come in and say, hey, I have this idea for a mural. And once that public arts commission is up and running, that will be a place for them to go to and decide where is the best place to put this mural so that everyone can see it. Creative placemaking builds up rural areas, their appeal, and it makes them a destination that thrives through tourism. When people find out that they have huge statues of hodags or these beautiful murals lining up and down the streets of our beautiful town, people are going to want to come here. And that truly is how a rural little town can thrive immensely because that's going to be, bring in those tourism dollars and it's going to bring in tourism of not only fishermen who are going after that trophy muskie or the snowmobilers that come up here seasonally to take advantage of our, our wonderful snowfalls. But it's also going to bring in artists and art lovers, which will just increase the wealth of identities that come to our little town. It's a beautiful way to represent a little rural town and to help it shine in the shadow of a big city. Through murals, temporary installations, art sculptures, and dance, songs about our rural community. There's songs about Paul Bunyan, too, I've heard them. Um, it's all part of that whole creative placemaking opportunity that we can have. So Art Start is a prime example of an initiative that is moving forward with this creative placemaking. Recently, they have come to city council, and we are talking about creating a art park in the back of Art Start. So I, I thought it was just a wonderful idea when Ashley uh, first brought it up. And it's going to be a destination for people. It's going to be a destination for people to enjoy all the time. And it's, a, it's basically a walk-through art display. And I think it's going to be absolutely fantastic because that, again, is a prime example of creative placemaking. And I'm encouraged to see what other kind of art displays are going to be popping up throughout our city and bringing in those people that want to see art. Why is art so important to anybody? Well, I like to think that art inspires. It gets the creative thought moving in anybody's head, even if they're an artist or not. It makes people happy. When you see a beautiful piece of art, it just makes you happy. When you see something that's maybe not so beautiful, it's thought-provoking. It makes you think. Happiness, making you think, it's all part of that creative process that inspires people. Again, a true artist is not one who is inspired, but one who inspires others. And any artist that puts up a display in a rural area has that hope and dream. It brings people together and tells a story of rural America, their culture, their historical significance. And without current public art, there wouldn't be a lot of community pride. Community pride is based around the fact that we have all this beautiful art to tell people about. Local historian, Carrie Bladorn, I have seen him tell the story of the Hodag at the Pioneer Park Historical Complex more times than I can count, 
and not once has his passion for telling that story been below 100%. He tells the story of our cultural identity in a way that nobody else can. And it's wonderful. Storytelling, part of our cultural identity. Art. Locals light up with pride when a person visits our town and says, what's a hodag? They light up. They want to tell those people what a hodag is. They themselves become local folklore storytellers. Without cultural identity through public art, when asked by uh, someone visiting, a local says, where are you from? And a local will tell them, well, I'm a hodag. That's their cultural pride. And that's why art in rural America is so very important because it's about pride, it's about inspiration, and it's about sharing our story as a community. And that's what I got. Thank you.